What's up people? Good day, good morning, good evening. I hope we're all well and blessed or wherever we may be. For but we're going to go forth today with a newfound reverence for God and a newfound understanding of his scriptures. I also hope that you had an amazing Easter, Passover, First Fruits, Resurrection Sunday, Good Friday. And that you're going to go forth this week keeping that in mind and keeping the meaning behind them celebrations in mind. Because them celebrations aren't all about Easter eggs and chocolate. No, it's about Jesus Christ. It's about the Passover lamb to end all Passover lambs. Yeshua. And I remember what he did for you. He paid the price so that you didn't have to. And through his death on the cross, we have freedom. Freedom in Christ. But we don't deserve. For he gave to us. Why? Because he loved us unconditionally. Without condition. He forgave us. And I pray that we remember that he loved us unconditionally. And that he forgave us regardless of our sins. So that when we are approached by someone who offends us, we forgive them also. Why? Because God first forgave us. And that we love others, why? Because God first loved us, in Jesus' name. Amen. So today's daily scriptures are, I'm just going to get them up quickly. John 15, 18 to 20. And I'm going to start by reading from the NLT. And then we'll move on to the Amplified and also the Tree of Life version, which are the trio of versions which we like to read on this channel. So, begins. It says for the New Living Translation. 18. If the world hates you, remember that it hated me first. This is Jesus Christ speaking. The world would love you as one of its own if you belonged to it, but you are no longer part of the world. I chose you to come out of the world so it hates you. Do you remember what I, what I told you? A slave is not greater than the master. Since they persecuted me, naturally they will persecute you. And if they had listened to me, they would listen to you. And from the Amplifier, which kind of goes into more explicit detail on the scriptures, it reads, If the world hates you and it does, know that it has hated me before it hated you. If you belong to the world, and the world would love you as its own, and would treat you with affection, but you are not of the world. You no longer belong to it, but I have chosen you out of the world. And because of this, the world hates you. Remember, and continue to remember, for I told you a servant is not greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they, ke if they kept my word, they will keep yours also. And from the Tree of Life version it reads, If the world hates you, know that it has hated me before you. If you were of the world, the world would love you as its own. But you are not of the world. Since I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hates you. Remember the word I spoke to you, a servant is not greater than his master. If they persecute me, they will persecute you also. If they kept my word, they will keep yours also. So what are these scriptures trying to tell you? Have a think about it, meditate, pray, and come back to this video in one. So it's basically telling you that as believers we're going to be hated by the world. And that we're, we're, we're set apart from the world. Obviously, as children of the Most High God, as disciples of Christ, we're not going to fit into the culture around us. Because why? Because Christianity is countercultural. In the world, they tell you if they've got to put people down, people have to serve you to be successful. But what, what Christ brings is an upside down kingdom where the greatest in the kingdom is the one that serves others, is the one that lifts others up even beyond themselves. And that's what the world hates. The world doesn't like compassion. The world doesn't like love. The world tries to produce conflict. It tries to produce hate. It tries to produce all manners of negativity and evil, greed, idolatry, sexual immorality, in order to, to bring people away from a place where they, can, where they can accept Christ. And that's the devil's greatest plan. He likes to put people in a place where they're not even they're not even thinking about Jesus Christ. They're not even thinking about God. They're not even thinking about their salvation because they're so distracted with trash on TV, in music, in the world around them, telling them they need to go for this thing, they need to have goals to get this thing and that thing. They don't even think about the eternal consequences of the things they're doing because they're so caught up in the material world. So, the world that hated Jesus Christ, it hated the disciples, it hated the early church, and the early church was heavily persecuted and executed and in fact you can look up the deaths of the disciples all of them all of the uh the 12 the 12 apostles disciples all of them were brutally killed other than the the one that jesus christ loved uh they say which is which is john you know and uh 
he he was I believe he was bored alive, but then he survived. And then obviously he was exiled to the island of Patmos, where he wrote the Book of Revelation. And basically, what happened to the rest of the disciples? They were all brutally murdered, and even Peter, according to the historical record, was crucified upside down because he refused to be crucified, as that was the same way Jesus Christ died, and he, he believed he didn't deserve to die the same way. So he he was killed in an even more excruciatingly horrible way. And, and it's just, that really just puts you out there to what we believe in. If it, if it wasn't true, if what we believed in wasn't true, then people wouldn't be being trying to take us down throughout the whole of history. They wouldn't have killed the disciples. And if they had, if they had lied about what they seen, because I often hear, oh, the disciples made it up, or Paul made this religion up, etc. But if that's true, then why would all these people go out and die for a lie? Them, them apostles... Even Paul, he, was, he never walked with Jesus in the physical. They all went to their deaths, and they went to their deaths happily preaching the word of God. And if it was true that this whole situation was made up, then why would they do that? They had nothing to gain. They had nothing to gain for what they were doing. They were standing against a culture at the time, which they knew would brutally murder and persecute them for their beliefs. So it wouldn't make any sense whatsoever. And today, as believers, we're persecuted still. Obviously, we're not being persecuted in the same way as the early church was. But it still occur, like we see now in society, where it, it's, it's acceptable to make fun of Christianity, to mock Jesus Christ, to mock God live on TV. But you can't do the same thing for other people's religions, for other people's beliefs, or other people's ethical codes. Because that will get you cancelled, or even in some cases imprisoned. But if you were to do the same thing to Christianity, it's, it's socially acceptable, and no one does a single thing. Why? Because the devil knows... The devil knows that Christianity is the truth, so he's trying his best to bring it down. How does he do that? By deceiving people's minds, by deceiving people's minds of foolishness in order to in order to continue to persecute Christians here on earth. And what does it say here? We're going to read from the Tree of Life version. If the world hates you, know that it has hated me before you. So when we're being persecuted, remember that Jesus Christ was also persecuted and was sent to his death even, even for his purpose the Father gave him, you know? If you were of the world, the world would love you as its own, and that's true. If you was of the world and you wasn't set apart as a child of God, as a disciple of Christ, the world would love you. Why? Because you're just like, you're conforming to the evil around you. As soon as you stop conforming to this madness around you and you start seeing and the Holy Spirit starts guiding you, starts showing you the disgusting nature of the world around you, you start stepping outside of it and realise, oh, I don't want to be a part of this, this is, this is, this is terrifying. And you start stepping more into God's presence. And what does that do? That sets you against the dynamic forces and principalities where you are. So naturally, they're going to try and bring you down. They're going to try and bring you back into their, into their fold. And of course, they're going to love you if you're a part of the world. Because they don't have to worry about you. You're not someone they have to worry about who's, who's, going, to, who's going to turn the tide against them in God's favour in, in the area you live in. So they're going to love you. The world will love you because you're just like them. When you conform to something, people love you. For instance, uh, say you go to a football stadium. You go there... You support the team for, for, for like, it's, it's their home stadium. For instance, here in Croydon in the UK, all these people, they support Crystal Palace Football Club. So you go to Crystal Palace and you're wearing a Crystal Palace shirt, you're with all the Crystal Palace fans. Yeah, you're, you're, you're one of the people in Crystal Palace. They're going to love you. But if you were to go there and wear, you know, a Charlton Athletic shirt in the Crystal Palace, and they're going to hate you, they're going to swear at you. Why? Because you're not conforming to their standards and you're not a part of them. This world out there today, it will try and make you conform to the standards of the world even though we know it's wrong. And unfortunately, a lot of Christians are caving into this pressure and they're conforming to things which aren't biblically correct, but aren't biblically solid. And they're moving astray from the belief system which we hold. They're moving straight from the truth and straying from their relationship with Jesus Christ. And what does that do when you do that? When you start accepting things that aren't from the Bible, you start accepting things that aren't biblically accurate. When you start straying from your relationship with Christ and God's will, you lose the protection of God, you lose the blessing of God, and you open yourself up to be influenced dynamically by dynamic forces. Whenever you start acting contrary to what the Bible tells you, you're opening a door to allow dynamic forces to manipulate your manipulate you in some aspect of your life that's why it's so important to stand in our faith and allow jesus christ to take root continue communion with, with god the father continue listening to the holy spirit and then you will stand in a position where you're blessed where you're prosperous where you're protected and no dynamic force will be able to overcome you why because you live in the presence of god you breathe out the love of god you inherit you you've got the the nature of jesus christ within you 
and, and you, you show it to the world around you because you reside in God's presence. Therefore, when a demon looks at you, they know that you're a child of the Most High God. They, they know that you're a disciple of Christ and they tremble with fear. So it says here, we'll go back to the Tree of Life version. If you're of the world, the world will love you as its own. But you are not of the world. Since I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hates you. So we've been chosen to not to be set apart from the world. So the world hates us. Why? Because we're disciples of Christ and we're children of God. And no matter how much the world hates us, if we stand firm on our beliefs, there's nothing they can do about it. At the end of the day, these people may hate on us, but one day, when they're in front of God, they're going to have to answer for their crimes, for their sin. Remember, the word I spoke to you, a servant is not greater than his master. If they persecute me, they will persecute you also. If they, keep, if they kept my word, they will keep yours also. So that's telling you that no, none of us are greater than Jesus Christ our Lord, and that's true. And if they're going to persecute him, they're most definitely going to persecute us. And the people who listen to him, they will listen to us. And at the end of the day, we have to remember those who are called, they will, we, we call, those who we preach to, we're just there to sow a seed to be an instrument of the Spirit of God. And yeah, we're going to receive persecution, but we've got to stand firm in the face and get through that persecution and not allow it to take us down. And to stand firm against the dynamic forces in our area so that, so that we can defeat them and win over the area for Jesus Christ. And that is our mission. We're, we're called to be spiritual warriors going out there praying casting out demons healing the sick bringing people into the body of christ and we can only do that effectively if we understand that this 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 favor isn't all roses and rainbows there's struggles there's temptations there's people trying to bring us down but we've got to stand firm and understand if the world hated christ he's gonna they're gonna hate us as well why because we're standing here as representatives of christ as ambassadors for the kingdom of god therefore we're the light we're allowing God's light to shine through us in the darkness. We are the light in this world. We are the church. The world's going to hate us because they know that we're, we're here to defeat the world. They're scared. The demons are scared. They're going to do anything they can to bring us down. But if we stand faith, we stay prayed up, protected, blessed. There's not a damn thing they can do about it. Why? Because we are children of the Most High God. And I'm so, I'm so happy. I'm so blessed to be a part of that family. And it's continue to stand firm in the faith and overcome every obstacle and every challenge we face. In Jesus' name, amen. Have a great day today. And remember, he has risen, and therefore, one day, we will rise again to be with our Lord and Savior, Joshua, Jesus Christ, the, the God, the Son. Peace. Peace be to Adonai.